Oh, hello, my friends. Hope you are well. Now, back when I was a young field mouse, you know, old knee high to a grasshopper type deal, I remember seeing this really cool 40k artwork of a Catachan patrol moving through a jungle. And this always stuck with me as one of my favourite pieces of Warhammer art. So today, I thought I'd try to whip up a bit of a diorama inspired by this scene. Let's get into it. So, as with all my diorama videos, I've made a little plinth off camera to house the scene, and I decided to use a bit of a sloped profile for this one in the hopes that it'd allow me to display the miniatures amongst all the plant life without them blocking the line of sight to each other. To make a start on the actual diorama though, I'm using some snippets of cork sheeting to create some very basic variation in the ground levels. And once I've layered up a few of those little piles, I use a hobby knife to rough up the edges of the cork to give it a bit more of a natural stone texture. Which was kind of pointless as these areas ended up covered by plants later, but it still helped for giving the ground a bit more of a natural and varied appearance. I also scratched out a faint ditch across the bottom of the foam here so I could add a small stream later on, which isn't in the original artwork, but I do want to give this build some personal touches, meaning it's not going to end up being completely faithful to the art. Anyway, I squelch on a bunch of my homemade mud mixture to give the floor a nice muddy texture and blend some of the rocky areas together a bit better. And while I was doing this, I was thinking that I couldn't remember the last time I did a project without using this stuff in one way or another, so definitely whip up some for yourself. Because if you don't, then I will chew loudly into your ear with my mouth open. With this being a jungle diorama, we definitely want some nice trees to jungle up the place and provide an interesting silhouette. So I've made up a bunch of my usual wire and hot glue method. I've shown this method in previous videos, but for anyone not in the know, you basically just twist up some floral wire into a kind of skeleton tree shape and then coat it with hot glue to bulk them out a bit more. To attach them to the diorama, I just drill out a small hole using my hobby knife and squirt in some hot glue to help secure them in place. And I'm focusing these towards the rear of the diorama to build an interesting silhouette as I mentioned, but also to ensure I'm not obscuring any of the other details I'll be adding later. It would have been cool to add these trees on the sides of the diorama too, and build up quite a claustrophobic jungle look like in the artwork, but doing this would mean I really limit the number of viewpoints I have for the diorama, you know, you'd basically only be able to look at it dead on from the front if you want to see all the miniatures and other details, whereas I'd like a bit more of a flexible effect where I can see stuff from over the sides as well. Sometimes you have to deviate from your original artwork or reference material when you're adapting them to dioramas in order to maintain a decent effect that will actually translate to the physical three-dimensional world. So yeah, just a bit of food for thought for when you're doing your own builds. But enough of that mumbo jumbo, once the trees were in place I decided to add some little rooty bits for some extra interest and these are done in very much the same way as the trees. I just lay down a piece of floral wire where I want the root to go and then use some more hot glue to thicken them out and give them more of a gnarled shape. I don't go too crazy with these though, not every tree needs a thousand little rooty offshoots coming from them but a few here and there adds a nice effect. Then, to get everything ready for painting, I covered the trees and roots using some more of my homemade mud mixture, as this hides the weird smooth texture from the hot glue with a more natural rough barky appearance. And finally, add a bunch of small rocks and gravel to our little stream section using some PVA glue. This does look quite out of place at the moment, but it's mainly just to add texture and it will blend in a lot better once we paint and add some plant life. I'm using some black to prime this baby up today as it means I can paint up the plastic card side panels of the plinth at the same time and with that we are ready to start slinging a bit of paint around. I kept the painting for this build pretty simple as the vast majority of it was going to end up covered later anyway, meaning there wasn't much reason to go crazy with it. So after getting the ground and trees covered with a nice shade of brown, I came back in with some greens before it could dry, which allowed me to get a nice blend between the two colours. I did the same with some okra, but this time focused it on the trees and roots mainly. After that, the rocky cork layers I built up earlier got a bit more attention, then I gave everything a good soak in using quite a dark green wash I'd made by watering down some acrylic craft paints. 
Once the wash had dried off thoroughly, I came back in with some different layers of dry brushing to bring out the textures across the different surfaces. And for the ground, I started with a darker green mossy color and then used a kind of pale stone color, focusing this more on the front end of the diorama around the stream and rocky layers. I used a couple of different brown colors on the trees to give their bark more of a varied appearance. And finally, I used a bright green color on both the ground and the trees. I was trying not to go too over the top with this color as it is quite bold but I think this brighter colour helped to inject a bit of life into the scene. And yeah, I was feeling quite happy with the painting at this point. As I said, it didn't need to be perfect since it will mostly be covered up anyway. So I was now ready to make a start on adding some of the foliage needed to transform this into a dense slice of jungle. The first thing I wanted to do here was to add some nice drooping jungle vines across the trees. And I've shown how to make these in a previous swamp scenery video I did a while ago. So check that out for more detail. But the basic process is just to soak twine in a mixture of PVA glue, paint and flock and then drape these over all the branches. And I'm not being especially neat here, you know, there's no particular method to my madness. I'm just trying to make sure they're somewhat evenly spread out across the trees and that we have some nice visible loops hanging down. Once they're in place and they've had time to dry, I give them a little touch up of paint using that same bright green colour used on my scenery a moment ago. And this helps them to look more at home in a vibrant jungle. And they're looking pretty good actually. Nice. Up next is the actual foliage for the trees and I'm adding this in a few separate layers to build up quite a nice varied and dense appearance. So for the first layer I'm using this lighter coloured green clump foliage which you don't want to be caught carrying around in public and I'm just super gluing this stuff to the majority of the branches I want greenery on. Next I'm using this slightly darker foliage stuff which has a lot more of a kind of sparse texture. I'm not really sure what you call this stuff. It's, it's a bit weird to be honest and it comes in a little sheet you have to tear pieces off but yeah it works pretty well and especially when you're layering it on top of the clump foliage to build more of a varied look. I also use a small amount of this olive coloured shrubbery foliage stuff. It comes in much smaller clumps than the first one we used and I'm using it quite sparingly as it's fairly dark compared to our other colours but again it's just good for mixing up the texture even more. And the treetops are looking pretty good like this but the foam flock does have more of a fluffy appearance than I want today. So I went around and added a whole lot of this kind of leafy shrubbery stuff. Again I'm not 100% sure what this is. I think it's either a green stuff world or a gamers grass product but whatever it is it's pretty good sh and I've been using it a lot in any of my builds which contain naturey stuff recently. This stuff adds much more of a visibly leafy texture to the tops of our trees and also allows me to add some little drapey bits hanging down over the branches, which is pretty cool. I give everything a bit of a squirting with some watered down PVA glue and then dust on some very fine flocks to kind of blend everything together a bit more and make it a bit more unified. And that's looking pretty awesome now I think. Make sure to leave a like or a subscribe if you agree and if you disagree then make sure to leave a like or a subscribe. And let's move on to our ground foliage. I'm starting this ground foliage off with some larger plant life, being these banana trees which I've made by snipping off the spiky bit from a bamboo skewer, painting it brown and dry brushing it for some texture, and then gluing on a bunch of these banana tree leaves from Gamers Grass, which are really cool. I made a bunch of these and I'm adding them mostly around the edges of the diorama in the hopes of giving it a bit more of an interesting profile and helping to immerse our miniatures in the jungle environment without visually obscuring them like the full size trees would. Next up I've got a ton more of these different gamers grass laser cut plants which I've used in a bunch of my videos previously and are probably the best miniature plants I've found so far in my time hobbying. And I'm just chucking these down wherever feels good really. I, I want a really dense and crowded jungle vibe for this diorama so I'm not skimping on the plant life here. One thing I will mention though is that I make sure to kind of bend the leaves up and just rough them up a little bit really as this makes them look a lot more natural than when they've come straight out the packaging where they're just perfectly flat leaves which you know obviously you wouldn't find in nature. And to be fair a lot of these plants are probably not actual jungle plants you know they're probably more likely to be found in I don't know forests or deserts or swamps or whatever else instead but for me it's not a big issue you know I'm making a diorama based in a universe where giant power armor wearing superhumans punch holes in aliens and space demons and all kinds of weird shit. so seeing a little lord and lady plant in a non-native environment doesn't seem like such a big issue. 
Anyway, I use a bunch of large jungle tufts to fill in any gaps between the plants and leave a nice little channel here as a path for our Catachan patrol. And then use some of these large bracken, jungle bracken of course, to blend the grass in with the rest of the scene a bit better. And I think that'll do it for now. We've got quite a nice dense look going, probably as dense as I can make it using the supplies I have available to me, paired with the visual look I want to accomplish. So now it's time to paint up the miniatures who will call this diorama home. So of course I'm going to be using some Katachan jungle fighters for this diorama and these miniatures are pretty cool but also super goofy looking. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing because they remind me of the cheesy 80s action movies and I'm a fan of those but these sculpts are definitely pretty dated now compared to the rest of the 40k range and deserve an update. Update my boys games workshop. And also really quickly, these were a right pain in the ass to build, instead of the weapons having arms attached to them like most miniatures, these had a weird hybrid thing going on where you have to clip off pieces of the weapon and join them together with the arms which have a section of weapon grip and stock built into them already. Yeah, I don't know, it was, <laughs> it was really weird and it was really fiddly and annoying to build, but anyway. I wanted to get quite a classic look going for these guys and I can't lie I was feeling a little bit tired by this point of the build so I decided to go for a nice and easy base coat wash and highlight procedure which I think ended up working quite well for getting an old school paint job vibe going to match their old school sculpts. And the miniatures were quite fun to paint but honestly they weren't as easy as I thought they'd be. Because they have quite a limited amount of details, I had to really think about where I was placing my highlights to try and get a somewhat natural appearance going. Most of the 40k minis now have a ton of detail and, you know, for example, if a shoulder's exposed, there'll usually be a ton of visible striations or details which make your highlight placement especially really easy. Um, so although these guys are jacked, you know, they've clearly been on the chicken rice and broccoli, there are a lot of smooth surfaces, including areas like the shoulders, which made them a bit more difficult for me to paint well. And as the old saying goes, a good miniature painter always blames the miniatures because it couldn't possibly be his lack of skill. <laughs> Once I'd got the basic colours looking about as good as I could, I decided to add a really simple camouflage effect on the trousers, using some randomly shaped brown splotches here and there. And I think this worked fairly well in the end and it was super easy to do, but I liked the effect it gave. And after that I just finished everything else off with the usual final highlights and touch ups and painting in the small details I inevitably missed along the way and our miniatures were now finished. So the finish line was now very much in sight for this project and I was feeling pumped. Only fractionally as pumped as these guys are but still very pumped overall. So to finish this baby off I added a thin layer of swamp goo stuff along the bottom of our little jungle stream to give it a nice wet glossy mossy algae covered look to the rocks then squirted on a bit of this water effect juice. I did a couple of layers of this stuff in the end as you have to apply it in very shallow layers but once it dried I added a bit of this water ripple effect stuff to add the impression of some movement on the surface and then I added our miniatures into place and added a couple more plants including some small flower tufts to add some little bursts of colour. And now, it is time to see how it all turned out. So my friends, what do you think? Pretty good or pretty shit? <laughs> I can't lie, I'm quite happy with how this has turned out actually. It's definitely a bit removed from the original artwork that inspired it, but I think you can clearly see the inspiration in it, or at least I hope you can, but even if you can't it still looks pretty cool. I had a ton of fun building up a dense jungle vibe using all the different plants and pieces of greenery I used today. I've been wanting to do something like this for a while now actually but there'd always been a slight barrier to entry as all the little plants I use are not necessarily cheap and you need a lot of them if you want to get a good dense look going. But luckily I've been saving up my pocket money and I can buy all the tiny plants I like. Who needs food when you have miniature plants? And as I said a moment ago, the miniatures were a little bit more annoying to paint than I'd expected and I didn't get as clean of a finish as I'd have liked but I do like the old school paint job they're rocking and they're looking quite at home in this jungle environment. If you've got any favourite Warhammer art you'd like to see me attempt to recreate then let me know down below. I've got a bunch in mind for future videos and there's one I'm particularly excited about and think I could do justice to so stay tuned for that. 
As always though, if you enjoyed this video then please leave a like or a subscribe or leave a comment down below to let me know what part of this build you like the most or the least or let me know which brand of paint tastes the best to you. And for now, I have been your friendly neighborhood swamp rat and I will see you very soon in another video. See ya.